Before I start this video, I just want to say a huge thank you to Chris at Natural Aspirations. He's taken care of me twice with this RV and I'm taking all my other cars in the future to him because he does great work. He's not too far from me, so if you are in the SoCal, like Los Angeles area, definitely hit him up. I will have all the information you need in the description so you can send him a message and he'll take care of you. What is going on guys? We are currently on our way to the dyno. We're about 20 minutes away and I'm excited. We're finally gonna turn the boost up so I can stop telling people that this thing only makes 270 horsepower. We are two minutes away. I'm so excited. I can't wait to see what we can get out of this motor. We made it. And look, he's got a R33 chilling right there. And a nice Datsun with some slicks on it. Damn, I wonder what that thing's making. So while he's getting everything set up for tuning, look at this. R33, and if you notice, it's left-hand drive. So the story with that is that it's an OEM left-hand drive from Nissan. It's uh, one of the Motor X cars they got imported in. Because I have a side exit exhaust, we have to protect the dyno. And if it's not enough, then we're just gonna throw the old hood exit back on. So that's our solution. So now we got the car on the dynos. So we just gotta do a couple of things and then we can start it up and get the dyno uh, calibrated and everything and then we can start doing some, some pulls. I'm so excited to see what this thing does. We're shooting between 300 and 325 horsepower so we can keep it still reliable because it is a stock block so we don't want to push too much in it. Having the bigger tires, it adds more stress on the drivetrain. We're not trying to mess anything up. But I've been waiting for this for a while. I mean, I'm just excited. So let's see what she does. So hopefully this like drip pan heat shield for the dyno works because if not, we'll have to take the hood off, throw the hood exit on. The hood exit is kind of a bitch to put on, but if we have to do it, then we have to do it. So far so good. He said that uh, there's a couple spots where it's running just a little bit lean so he wants to make sure everything's running rich. So he's adjusting that right now but so far everything looks good. So that's that's good news. So just like last time we had some boost spiking issues. We're having them again and we're thinking there's something with the boost controller. We're double checking everything seeing what's going on. Jeez. Oh, well underneath there is fine. <laughs> I'll show the final numbers in a second, but he's about to set up the launch control two-step. Uh, so we're gonna see how that is. Maybe we'll see some fire. at the dyno so we can leave now we can leave the skyline 
but Chris is a super cool dude, highly recommend him. If you are in the SoCal area, then take your car to him, he'll take care of you. So I'm curious how much fuel we used. I filled up yesterday and we got her filling up on 91. I'm gonna guess and say 10 gallons. No way, I was way off. Damn. Look at that. That makes me really happy. I thought I was about to spend like 80 bucks. Okay, now now we can go home. So it's actually the next day. I didn't drive the 240 too much. I'm going to do some pulls in a second, but I just wanted to go over some of the things that happened at the dyno. So first off, before I get into anything, dyno sessions do not take a couple hours. They don't take one hour. They don't take two hours. They can take all day sometimes. You never know what's gonna happen. Something on your motor might break, something might fail. You might have to do some troubleshooting, which we had to do both times I was there. So the first thing that happened was the boost controller. It turns out that I had the lines backwards. So having it backwards meant that the wastegate wasn't getting the boost reference. So what would happen is it would just keep building boost until it hit the boost cut, which is 20 PSI. So this turbo made 20 PSI at like 5,000 RPM. When it did that, it hit the boost cut, and what a boost cut does, once the map sensor reads a certain PSI, then the injectors just all shut. You take away the fuel, it can't rev any higher, can't make any more boost. So on, on this setup, it is at 20 PSI. Once we got that figured out, we did a baseline run, and the motor made, I think, like 260 something horsepower and a little less torque than what the original number was because when I did the first tune I had a hood exit so that freed the turbo up a lot so there wasn't any restriction really. It was also a three inch hood exit and my exhaust now is two and a half inch the entire way with a vibrant resonator in the middle. So the smaller diameter piping means that not as much air is going to flow through it as the three inch would so that is going to restrict the turbo a little bit and not make as much power as it could. But I went two and a half inch rather than three because one it was a lot cheaper and and it's a lot quieter and even with that this thing is super loud once we got that figured out everything went pretty smoothly until we changed the spark plugs because it started to break up and boost when that happened we couldn't figure out what it was because all we did was put new spark plugs in and we gapped them and everything seemed like it should be fine but all of a sudden it starts breaking up and boost so it turned out to be something super odd but thankfully Chris had experienced this a few weeks ago so he remembered that and then we were able to get this fixed so I have LS1 coil packs on this so I have the coil packs and then the spark plug wires going into the plug and then they're all tucked away in the valley and I could throw the cover back on but I'm just I just won't right now I gotta do some things to it first so sometimes on the spark plug wires it can actually start arcing and that'll cause the plug to not get the right power and then it starts to break up and boost so to fix that we took electrical tape and we wrapped it around the boots on all six coils and as soon as we did that it ran perfect really glad that it happened on the dyno because i would have never guessed that i would have been so confused and i probably would have gotten new coil packs and new wires and everything and potentially still had the same issue. So that was pretty much the issues that we had and it was pretty much an all day thing. I got there a little bit before 10. I left around like 6.30 p.m. That's pretty standard for a dyno day. It could take multiple days because you never know what's gonna go wrong. So when you get your car ready for the dyno and you make an appointment and everything, don't make any plans for afterwards because you never know what's gonna happen. So I haven't really gotten on the motor yet. I'm going to in a bit, but I wanted to get my reaction on camera of when we're doing that because I wanna see just how much different this is gonna feel compared to what it was before. So I'm gonna shut up and we're gonna go do some pulls.
this motor is insane. Like it pulls really hard and even not even at wide open throttle, like it, it pulls hard. It's, it's, a, it's night and day from what it used to be. Before it used to be like kind of ease into it and then 11 PSI all at once and it pulled you back in your seat and it was cool. But now it's like, it just comes and then it just keeps going and going and going up until red line and uh, it's just it's just awesome i hit the limiter like a lot faster it seems um <laughs> but that's just basically it like i'm so happy like chris thank you so much like the car is a fucking animal now <laughs> definitely hit up chris at natural aspirations if you're in the los angeles area or i think he even has a shop in oceanside now too so if you're in that area you can also hit him up and he can tune your car he does great work fair price everything is just great but again when you do a dyno day don't make plans for the rest of the day because you never know what's going to happen so that is going to be it for this video thank you so much for watching please leave a like if you did comment down below and hit that subscribe button i'll see you guys next time peace